This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. All right, it is 6.53. Time to get you ready to take on your Monday here in the Morning Sprint. Sydney Charles has details on a tragic shooting in Baltimore where 30 people were shot. Desi Richards has given us an inside look at a new fitness center located in the Perry District. But first, let's get to Mark Peterson with a look at that 4th of July Eve forecast. All right, good morning, everybody. So things are looking pretty good. Spokane right now, blue sky, beautiful, 59 degrees. It's been a great start. Got a little cool there, but it's going to warm up nicely. We're going to continue to take a look at air quality right now. We're good, could be into moderate later on today. But we look at our forecast for the day. Yeah, we're going to be in the low 60s. That's at 8. And then you can see by noon, we're going to be in the upper 70s. In fact, all afternoon, low 80s with a high today of 82. And it will be sustained until 6, maybe 7 o'clock. Well, the man accused of killing four members of an Idaho family will wait until August for a hearing to determine if there's enough evidence for a trial. And now a judge has issued a gag order in the case. Police say Major John Kaler told him he snapped last month when he shot and killed four of his neighbors because his wife said an 18 year old from that family exposed himself to Kaler's young children. A judge said attorneys connected to the case are not allowed to publicly discuss what happened or any potential evidence. Prosecutors have said they will not seek the death penalty. The Spokane Valley man drowned in Coeur d'Alene on Friday. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says they received the report of a man possibly drowning in the Spokane River near the North Idaho College. That person was brought to shore and taken to Kootenai Health where he later died. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says they'd like to remind everyone to recreate safely. 30 people were shot at a block party in Baltimore over the weekend. Two of the people shot were killed. And this morning, police are still searching for multiple suspects involved in the shooting. 18-year-old Aliyah Gonzalez died at the scene, as well as 20-year-old Kailis Fagbimi, who passed away at a local hospital. Officials say the age range of the victims is from as young as 13 to 32 years old. The investigation is ongoing, but right now, officials are saying they're convinced there is more than one shooter given the different types of bullet casings found at the scene. Well, multiple fires have sparked up across the inland northwest, including one burning near Cheney. That fire is one mile west of South Pine Springs Road and West Lance Hill Road. Eric Keller of the Department of Natural Resources says the fire had burned 29 acres at last check and is burning grass and timber. The fire is moving toward rocky areas, but no structures are threatened. DNR says the fire is controlled, but it is not contained. That, of course, one of several fires that broke out yesterday in the Columbia River Gorge. A wildfire that officials are calling out of control is threatening homes and prompting level three or go now evacuations. You can see this forest near Underwood, Washington, that's across from Hood River, Oregon, is engulfed in smoke and those flames are burning through timber and brush. Fire officials say it's burned about 315 acres, including several structures, but no indication as to how many. A young man drove into an embankment near Athol Saturday night. The Timberlake Fire District says they responded to the crash a little before 8 o'clock. It happened near Nunn Road and McFarland Road. Crews were able to remove him from the car. He was then life flighted to a hospital. The fire district couldn't say anything about his condition or if drugs or alcohol played a factor in the crash. And we've been live with Operation Healthy Family this morning talking about their new youth fitness gym called Emanuel Fitness. A part of the organization's mission is to provide health equity services and programs to people in the Spokane community. And this is a part of that, providing access to weight room equipment, a gym and training machines for people, especially young kids and teenagers. You can go to our website, kxy.com for more about their summer sessions. Governor Jay Inslee made a visit to Spokane to see the recently closed Camp Hope and hosted a roundtable discussion about the progress the city has made to find housing for people at the camp while shutting it down. Friday marked three weeks since the camp closed. It took a year and a half and help from providers across the city, but that lot is now empty. Governor Inslee says despite the controversies that took place between the city, county, state, and people at the camp, its recent closure is a success story. And despite the ban on fireworks for much of the Spokane County, 
County, there are still plenty of places to enjoy a legal fireworks show for tomorrow's Independence Day celebrations. The Spokane Symphony will play at 9 p.m. near the Clock Tower in Riverfront Park before a fireworks show at 10. A Vista Stadium has its own fireworks show right after the Spokane Indians game. For a complete list of shows throughout the region, you can find this story on KXLY.com. All right, one more check of the weather with Mark next.